sports and the question is are you ready for some football it's the jaguars and the niners coming up next EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the so-called Silicon Valley and Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here as it'll be the Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the San Francisco 49ers. about ready to get us started and we are underway from Santa Clara the lane opens here he's past the 30 it's a foot race and they are not going to catch him he's in touchdown 49ers so a heck of a start to this one we haven't even gotten settled in already in the end zone on the opening kickoff and you know what happened too. Now, now you got to translate what that means because I think for a team to just score their defense, I think they'll be more aggressive now. They'll be bolder. They're playing with a lead and an early one in some momentum. So if you're the offensive coordinator on the other side of the field, you better be prepared for some heavy pressure coming your way. They're going to try and get another big score and a big win early. They always worry about the plant foot in the snow, but no problems there. And that makes the score 7 nothing. So let's try this again after the kick return TD. Here's yet another kickoff. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So here's the first drive now for the Jags. They're led by the number one overall pick in the 2021 draft, Trevor Lawrence. The word is potential, potential, potential. Think about this guy from the time he was in high school. One well, of the top prospects going to college, coming out of college, mentioned as a generational type quarterback. He looks the part. Tall, big arm, surveys the field, and can take off and run when under duress. A pretty good results here on the first down run as he takes this forward for about six. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against him. Trying to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off time. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. On third down, here's ETN. And it would appear he's going to be short of a first down as he stopped right around the 29. Just a one-yard gain on the play, and that'll be the call to the punt team as it's fourth down. Cook now on to punt as he gets this one away. Fielded at about the 28. And that'll be a return of 12 following a very nice punt. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. So now we'll get a look at the other offensive unit as they come out for their first possession. And they will be led out by their second-year quarterback. And there's a word that constantly gets thrown around with this guy when you talk to anyone in the building. Potential. They are sky high on what they believe he can grow into in the role of a starting quarterback. In addition, there are plenty around the league who think that as well. And years from now, he can still be leading this offense out. He'll get this out right here to McCaffrey. And yeah, he'll work free from one tackle, but that's about all as he's taken down. It'll go as a gain of four. And it'll be second down. Here's Purdy. And looking for Kittle, but it's intercepted. Rayshon Jenkins picks it off. And they will finally get him down as he's all the way to the 36-yard line. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now Lawrence. And that one incomplete, but now a penalty flag coming in late. That might be P.I. So 
So pass interference, the call is so tough as a defender, I'd imagine, to time that up perfectly. It certainly is difficult to get it exactly right because sometimes you're looking at getting there fractions of seconds too early. That one looked a little more obvious. Always a tough penalty to officiate. Touchdown, Jaguars! Evan Ingram, 30 yards. And the Jaguars are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. On here, Brandon McManus for the point after. Well, these may be an adventure this afternoon, but this one is good. Well, they got the ball in great field position. One play later, boom, end zone. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Back out there comes the 49ers offense ready for their second drive. They had the interception last drive, led to the tying touchdown. So 7-7 the score as they begin first and 10. Throw to the side, McCaffrey's got it. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. This is Samuel. Shifts past him at the 45. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. They'll get a dozen there, and it's a first down, 49ers. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. They go play action here. Purdy on the move to his left. And he'll dump this off to his running back, McCaffrey. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. Got the defense on their heels. Two first downs in a row, and now a pickup of eight. Second and a couple. First carry of the game for Christian McCaffrey. And McCaffrey going to pick up a Niners first down as a tackle made at the 42. I think that's the type of run we'll continue to see throughout this game. The snow coming down, I don't expect a lot of big plays to be broken. Purdy looking to throw on first down here. Trying for Ayuk, but it's intercepted. And the Jags are going to get the football here at their own 40-yard line. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at the 40. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Incomplete. So many times we've seen him try to escape the pocket and do something with his legs, but in this case, the pressure was too intense and he made the wise choice to just get rid of the football and make sure no one was going to get it. Lawrence now off the bootleg. This one caught by Ridley. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. His first catch, good for 14 there, and a first down. A shotgun snap and a give to ETN. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard game. And a second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. They'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one. Force the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Freeze up your guys elsewhere. Touchdown, Jaguars! Christian Kirk, 44 yards, and the Jaguars have taken the lead. McManus's point after is good, and that makes the score 14 to 7. The drive summary that time, five plays, and it culminates in a Jags touchdown. They'll elect to bring it out here from the end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. And San Francisco gets set to go here. And it's been a miserable start for them offensively, obviously. Two drives, two interceptions. And this is where you have to know your quarterback and know how you actually have to reach him. Do you do it with a little bit of humor? Maybe you break the ice a little bit like, hey, didn't we practice in that color jersey all week? Not the one that... <laughs> to be done. He's putting the game in jeopardy. 
on second down, McCaffrey. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. Here now, third and a yard. They'll bring one of the tight ends in motion left. Play action, and now here's Purdy to throw it. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Brought to the ground by the linebacker, Foye Aluakon. Through one quarter, 14-7, our score. The 49ers with the football here to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a fourth down coming up. They'll go for it. Here's Purdy. And he knocks the ball away and it throws incomplete. Boy, a real head scratcher there. And the Jags take over in terrific field position. Throwing now, Lawrence on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, they certainly knew their challenge as this series began. And they got a stop on play number one. Goal now, get two more stops and limit the damage to a field goal. Running out of the gun with ETN. And he's going to have this pretty close to a first down as the tackle is made at the Niners 17. Nine yards, not quite enough, and he'll be left now with third and one. They go play action with Lawrence. And this is going to be incomplete. Fourth down now as San Fran's defense is strong in coverage. Doug Peterson going to roll the dice here. They will go for it on fourth down. Going for it. Here's ETN. And I'm not sure he got there. Did they stop him? They did. He needed a yard. He didn't get anything. And the 49ers are going to get the football back. And defensively, they were ready for that. A full-on blitz on fourth down. And they stopped. And that's the defensive coordinator. He dialed up a great run blitz defense, and they hit it just right. Stack that thing up. They're going to feel awesome going to the bench after that big play. A second down throw for Purdy. That's complete to the tight end winner. First time these two have worked out this afternoon, and it's a first down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we're watching make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred the defense. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Purdy. That's complete. It's Brandon Ayuk. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 42. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Kind of a dangerous throw there. He's off balance when he gets rid of it. But this is all about a quarterback knowing what he can get away with. And that time, it turns into a completion and a healthy gain as well. Purdy slow, complete here to Ayuk. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. They go right back to him for 20 and a first. Sometimes it's design, and sometimes you just have to know when to leave the pocket and move and make something happen. On that play, he's able to get on the run, and it's still accurate throwing the football. On first down, this is McCaffrey. And he'll keep it moving down to the 15-yard line. Here's second and three. Purdy. And he's got the touchdown for the Oilers. Brandon Ayuk, a 15-yard touchdown grab. And the 
49ers are an extra point away from evening this one up. A nice connection there, finding his target, and that'll put six up on the board. Just like they drew it up. That's right. Perfect route, a good throw to the defense. They had no answer for that right there. An extra point try now for Moody. Now we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it was Brandon Ayu capping it off with the touchdown reception. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Jacksonville back on offense and ready to take over. And on the last drive, they were in field goal range. They just opted not to kick it, didn't get it. How does that change the mentality this go around? I don't think it changes much for the head coach because this is what he preaches all the time. Attack at all times in any spot on the field. And he likes touchdowns, not field goals. Now, your field goal kicker, you've got to make sure you nurse him through and say, okay, don't worry about it. When we need you, you've got to be ready to go. And the team, of course, loves to see points on the board. So let's see if it changes a little bit They're in the same spot again. Yeah, we'll see what the decision is here if they get to that spot. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. Hold it. Offense. That hold coming from the left side of the line. Hands got caught in the cookie jar on that one, and the flag came out. A penalty against him. On second down, ETN once more. And a decent gain there as that takes us to the two-minute warning. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. We remind you that coming up in two minutes time, we'll hand you off to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Jags first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Lawrence, now this is ETN on the draw. And nothing but green glass here, middle of the field. Travis ETN, touchdown, Jaguars. Travis ETN. 63 yards, and the Jaguars have taken the lead. Extra point from McManus is good, and the lead is now 21-14. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. Now Brandon Ayuk ready to bring out the rest of this offense here for this upcoming series. Previous series, definitely a focal point. Three catches, the touchdown grab. As a DB, your former DB, is there a number of catches on a drive where you're like, oh, he got the best of us? I'm not sure there's a number, but there's a great feel. And what he did on the last drive, yeah. <laughs> Especially with the touchdown. Yes. You're never happy. You're exactly right. The way he capped it off. So you feel that in the sideline, and now you're looking at your buddies and saying, okay, what are we going to do to take things away from him? He's got a man complete. And they got it run across midfield down to the 40 before it's all said and done. A big pickup of 38. Now that certainly solidifies how to attack this two-minute drill right before the half. I don't think they were going to try and run out the clock. But now after that big play, their thoughts are certainly of trying to score and get some points before the half. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield to the 40 now for first and 10. Purdy now to throw off the play action. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and ten. It actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work that defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. 
Purdy off the play fake. Oh, and that is incomplete. Jacksonville's pass defense holds serve. Fourth down. I think it's safe to say that he's made some questionable decisions out there so far. Forced some throws into tight coverage. He's already been picked off in this game. Fourth down now, but he was fortunate on that one. Not to have another turnover on his ledger. Fourth down try. Here's Purdy. Work in the middle of the field. He's got a man complete. The 49ers now are going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 11 seconds remaining in this first half. So after the big play on fourth, here's first and ten. Play action. Now Purdy. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an out of boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. Here's second and ten. Purdy will look to throw again here. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. This drive, which was going so smoothly, all of a sudden it's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying no more. We're speaking a stand right here, right now. But it is third and ten. They've got to get after him one more time. He's got his target. That's complete. Touchdown. have a chance to tie the game here in the final seconds of the half. Well, my education continues in this game, I've got to tell you, because there's not an analyst in the world that would have said pass up the field goal here, go for it, and expect for it to be successful, and it was. I mean, they're playing this one just like a video game. <laughs> Especially for the final play of the first half to have the guts to do that, but... I guess, what do we say? The end will justify the means, right? No doubt about it. For you and me, we live, we learn. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. The big story thus far has really been the snow. It's made footing treacherous. And if the forecast holds, it's only going to get worse. But I can tell you as a fan, these are the games you love to watch. You'd have to imagine, given the snowy condition, lots to talk about at halftime for these two coaching staffs. Plenty of decisions to be made for this second half for sure. And for the call, we hand it back over to Brandon God. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. The Jaguars ready to get going to start quarter number three. This offense ready for the first drive of the third quarter. Well, quarters number one and two enter. Charles and all tied on the scoreboard. And it's set to suffer what could be a really fun second half because we've seen both sides score almost at will here in the first half. And now here in the second half, Getting the ball first, you've got to think, hey, we can go out and really run our offense the way we did in the first half. But if I'm a defensive player, all I'm thinking is, can I make a play to really help out my team and break this streak of offense? Here's third and six. Here's Lawrence. And it is caught. Room to maneuver at the 35. And down to the 29-yard line. One heck of a third down conversion, 33 yards. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Lawrence going to throw again. His throw incomplete. He didn't just deny a big throw there. He broke that one up in the red zone. An excellent play, one that may help save points on the board when this drive is over. Motion man left is Kirk, and they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Well, partner, they've been running it well the entire game, and the big guys up front, they're a huge reason why. And now they're reaping the benefits as they continue to open up big holes and gain nice yardage. Here's Lawrence to throw. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Well, one of the linebackers has got it, and his crew will take over with the football at the 35-yard line. 
So this game tied at the half, and if you wondered who would come up with the first big play in this third quarter, we have our answer. Well, in basketball, you know how they tell you to have active hands defensively? I think the same thing applies here. Nice job there, prying the ball free. And now the guys have a chance to take the lead if they can put something together. The beauty of doing it in football, you don't get called for a foul if you hit their arms. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their 35-yard line. Following the fumble recovery, Purdy. And incomplete on the deep ball. And those two just have been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. Up the gut, McCaffrey. And he'll rumble for about five, up close to the 40. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Third down, here's McCaffrey. And he's going to be taken down here, still a couple yards short of the first. And how about the call here? They need two yards in their own territory on fourth down, and they're going to go for it. And now what's this? They fake the spike. He'll throw it. And that is going to wind up incomplete. So they try to hit him with something you don't see too often. But it doesn't work out. On first and 10, it's ETN. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. 108 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. So first and 10 now from the 30. A short throw to Ingram. And they'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. 10 yards there, good enough for the Jags first down. Now Lawrence now going to move him around. Straight ahead, ETN shrugs him off. And all the way down inside the five to the four. Another nice gain, 16 yards there, and a first down again. They hand off to their big tight end. And he gets halfway there from the four to the two on a gain of two. From the two now, second and goal. Bigsby. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. Calling a gain of two as they're knocking on the door now. Third and goal. Let's go. And Bigsby once more. And now we're going nowhere from the start as he's met in the backfield and goes backwards. Can this defense hold him out? Here we go now. Fourth and goal from the two. And they'll try and throw for it with Lawrence. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert. And they turn it over. They try to throw on fourth and goal from the two. And this 49er defense stands tall down near the goal line. The San Francisco offense ready to start their next drive. A kind of a lucky break on the prior drive, Charles. The turnover on downs that the offense had didn't come back to bite them after the other side. Their defense came through, was able to hold them without any points. Back now here in Santa Clara. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. Now second and nine. From the shotgun to McCaffrey. They'll try to get forward, but he's going to be stopped in his tracks at about the three. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. Here's Purdy now on third and goal. To the sideline and incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. Wisnowski on to punt as he sends this one away. They juked him. 39-yard punt, six yards on the return. 
Now the Jags will have great field position to start this drive as they take over on the short side of the field. I'll tell you, far from ideal conditions to play in, but neither offense has had much trouble. Plenty of points to go around. First and ten. So the completion good for just three. And it'll be second down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. And a pretty good burst right there as he'll take this down to the 33. Ten yards there, good enough for the Jags first down. First down. Now Lawrence. Jones has it. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. 10 yards on the pickup. It's second and inches at the 23 yard line. ETN up the middle. That he's brought down, but he has it down to the 12 on a pickup of 12. First and 10. Motion man left is Kirk. And they'll go backwards here. Losing yardage to the 14. Hit and drop behind the line by Drake Greenlaw. Now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss. Lawrence will throw. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked up by Charmelius Ward. And the 49ers are going to take over at their own two-yard line. Well, they were in a great position to take the lead, Charles. Obviously, all they needed was a field goal to do that. They wanted the touchdown. Unfortunately, they're going to get neither. And you know every offense talks about the same thing each week, don't they, Brandon? They want to end every drive with a kick, whether it's a field goal attempt, a point after the touchdown, or at worst, a punt. This time they had that opportunity but didn't get it because you know the field shrinks that close to the end zone, and that allows a defense to tighten up their coverage, and they pick that one off. They start on the ground with McCaffrey. And they're going to get this all the way out past the 20. 51 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. They were probably just looking for a couple yards of breathing room, snapping the ball at their own two. Well, they got a lot of breathing room. And even knowing that offenses are as aggressive as they are now in the NFL. The ball's out. McCaffrey lost it. Getting down to the good stuff. All tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. So it's 49er football here as we get you reset. They've got a second down now as they search for a score to break this tie. Here comes second down. They go play action here. Purdy rolling to his left. Pass complete. Samuel. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. And this is obviously a spot where you lean on your stars, get the ball to them in open space, and let them do what they do. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. Here's Purdy to throw. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Brought down by Trayvon Walker on the pass rush. And they'll come up now. This is second and long. McCaffrey running up the middle. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. Short game, short game, last two plays. Who do you think's excited about that? Absolutely, this defense. They're saying go right ahead with those. To throw is Purdy. Oh, look at this. It's intercepted. Now inside the 25. And it's a huge return as he brings us all the way back down to the 15-yard line. So that changes things. You get the interception, and then to boot, a good return tacked on. And really, it was down to him versus the quarterback on the return, and that's one you would think the defender would win. But a nice job there of seeing the play all the way to the end and making the tackle by the QB. I think we saw the strategy there, how they moved it to the left hash so they could line things up for them to kick the field goal. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. And the 10-year bet knocks it through the goalpost. And it's celebration time on that sideline as they have taken the lead in the final seconds.
So as it turns out, a two-play drive resulting in the field goal. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. They'll come up first and 10 here. Purdy with one final shot here. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. They're unable to connect, but a late flag comes in. And the contact may have come too early. So the game will continue for at least one more play. To not finish a game on a defensive penalty, that's why they get one more untimed attempt. So here we go. It's Jake Moody now in a big spot. This to tie things up in the final minute. And his kick is right there. It's good. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. And we have free football over time. Here we go, my friend. And the way this game played out, this is exactly how it should end, going to overtime, because neither one got an advantage today. Conditions only going to get worse as we get back to football here to start this overtime. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down officially at the 21. San Francisco set to go on offense once more. I cannot imagine how these players and coaches feel, Charles, because my palms <laughs> sweating up here in the booth now as we go to the third drive of overtime. And as we know from here on out, any points win this football game. I'll throw you a top as well. I've got one for myself, but let's face it, our nerves, our pressure, nothing compared to what's going on on that field. Both of the field goal kickers active here early. Can one of them become the hero and end this thing? Play action, and now here's Purdy to throw it. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Once that ball was propped in the air, you could almost hear the silence, the collective breath being held here in the stadium. Let's be honest about it. We both came out of our chairs, didn't we? All right, anytime you see the ball in the air like that, there is that collective rise, the crowd holding its breath. And boy, oh boy, the moment of truth as it comes down. Man, that was something. Everything magnified here in overtime. What will they draw up to try to keep this opening drive of overtime moving? Third and seven. Open man is how you complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle is made at the Jaguars' 38-yard line. 23 yards on the play. And you definitely could make the case we might not even be in overtime had he not thrown three interceptions in regulation. But looking better here so far in OT. Yeah, and when you think about what a coach is thinking at that point, because normally you've thrown three picks during the game, you might craft your play call to be a little more careful. Not in this case. The green light still on for him. Now on first down, it's Purdy. Over the middle, complete to Samuel. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before you get a good head of steam going. Two yards the loss, and now they go from second and two to a tough third and four. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Here's Purdy. Gets this one to use check. So nothing doing there. And that'll bring up fourth down. Excuse my snarkiness here, but isn't the idea of completing a pass supposed to mean you get downfield and gain yards? Especially on third down. Yeah, that one. How about the defense? Figured that one out in a big way. Yeah, they completed it all right and lost yardage. On fourth down, here's Purdy. Incomplete, they cannot convert, and they turn it over. 
The Niners go for it, but it doesn't work out. And the Jaguars are going to take possession here on the turnover on downs. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. Now ETN to start the drive. And for one of the few times here today, this one's not going to go anywhere. Now a second and ten. Now we'll see what Lawrence can do in overtime. Completes it to Evan Ingram. Now he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Play action. It's Lawrence. He completes it to Jones. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Offensively, back-to-back -back really nice plays. This defense, they've got two timeouts, maybe should burn one. Yeah, when you get back-to-back -back explosive plays, to me, anything over 10 yards, I don't care if it's a run or a pass, I count it as an explosive play. That sets your defense back on its heels. A timeout here would be a good idea and try and get themselves settled because we're an OT. This is big time. Well, they've certainly done a nice job spreading the ball around on this drive. This time he gets it out to his back, and it's another nice play and another first down. They've got the defense on their heels a little bit. They're reacting instead of being aggressive and making plays. And he'll take this one inside the 10 down to the 8. And I know you, with every carry, especially in overtime, you're just saying, if you're that ball carrier, hold on to the football. Hold on to it, protect it, but not necessarily settle it because you're trying to get to the end zone. You're trying to end the game right here. And I know the defensive guys. Oh, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Charvarius Ward. And the Niners are going to have it with a chance to win the game here in overtime. Just a massive interception there, Charles, to keep this overtime going. And really, both defenses now have come up huge in this overtime. How about one forcing the turnover on downs because you know that first possession, if you score a touchdown, that wins the game. And they went for it, and they kept them from getting it done. And then the other defense comes on the field, and they pick one off. Who's going to make the big play now on offense that can lead to a field goal that can win this game? The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. And they've got some stuff to build on from that last drive because they moved the football CD and then they try to go for it. Oh, and it's intercepted. And he's going to get this on down to the 13-yard line. So a critical turnover on the third drive of overtime. And Charles, the end result is they're going to be set up in field goal range with a chance now to win it. Absolutely. And all you're thinking right now as a field goal kicker is, go ahead and put me in, coach. I want to finish this off, and we can all go home with a victory. Personal foul. Roughing the kicker. Defense. partner there's something special about a game in the snow just always fun in these elements although a little chillier up here in the open air booth the only thing that's